All right, I think we made it, and I think that we're live. Am I am I right? <laughs> I'm hoping to make sure since this is new, we're doing StreamYard, and it's always the behind the scenes, making sure both of us are live is always an undertaking. But I think we made it. I hope mm -hmm. so. Anyhow, <laughs> anyway, guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, I am Coach Julie Prager, and I'm here today with my guest, Dr. Scott Wadier. Scott is the co-founder of Fasting for Life, or The Fasting for Life. I forget the the, right, Scott? <laughs> All good, either way. <laughs> and he and his wife, Megan, have two little ones, a boy and a girl. You can look for Dr. Scott's podcast, The Fasting for Life podcast, um, and you can also check out his website, thefastingforlife.com. Did I get that right? You did. Okay, so okay, awesome. Well, we're going to get started then. So tell us a little bit about yourself for everyone that doesn't know you. Okay. Um, thank you for having me, Julie. This yeah. was a really, really cool experience. Um, as our new Fasting for Life endeavor is new, uh, this is really cool. So thank you for reaching out um, and hopefully we can provide some value. So a um, little bit about me. Um, I guess a good place to start is what I'm doing today and what I'm doing now. Um, I've always had a desire um, to help people ever since I was really young. My life was changed uh, by the chiropractic profession and really learning a definition of health that operates outside of the status quo from what a lot of people think health is. Yeah. Um, so being proactive rather than reactive. And I started at a very young age, started working out, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14, was always into nutrition. And I've always had a desire to, to help people. It's something that I just, you know, vibrate in that direction. So one of my mentors always says, do more of the stuff that makes you vibrate and less of the stuff that turns your stomach, right? I like so <laughs> I love educating, I love teaching, I love connecting the dots. Um, and you know, now really what I do on a daily basis is create content, create programs. Uh, I am uh, you know, coaching you know, people through the weight loss journey and how to put fasting into their life. That's awesome. um, but my, my passion always resides in that. And my, well, luckily my wife is also uh, very similarly minded. So um, you know, she has her own pediatric practice and you know, it's all about, you know, getting in and getting people some help. So, yeah, yeah, no, she's awesome. You guys are both awesome. I think that's why we're Thank good you. collaborating together because we both kind of have some similar passions. Yeah. Agreed. agreed. Yeah. So before we kind of dive into everything, um, I just want to check in with you during COVID-19, you know, how has that impacted your family? So, um, you know, I've been asked this question a few times, you know, when meeting with clients and, um, you know, business meetings. And I, I do some consulting for a couple of clinics up in the Midwest. And, you know, we'll get on. And before the meeting starts, the team members will start talking and asking that exact question. So I always feel bad, like almost bad being like, we're absolutely great. Like we I think we live in a bubble already. And, you know, obviously, if we were in New York City, that's a completely different situation. But where we are and kind of our day to day, like to answer your question directly, how we've been affected is really other than like mommy, daughter, daughter coffee dates and my wife and I having to do a date night um, in our Ford Explorer um, because <laughs> you can't go, you can't go, you like you literally can't go sit in a restaurant. So right, right. we do a date night every other Thursday. And so this last one, we went to our favorite place, got some food, drove out to where she, um, uh, boards her horse and we just sat and talked and connected and ate and then came home. So a little different. Um, but hey, you know, I, having a, I applaud uh, you guys because y'all are 10 steps ahead of us. Like our date is, you know, load up our four dogs and go for a walk. Like that's pretty much it. Or sit outside on the back patio. We haven't, we haven't done anything quite as grand as you guys. I mean, y'all are living large over there. <laughs> grand is a, an overstatement in my opinion, but, um, yeah, it's, you know, in our date night used to, con when we first started doing it, um, it was really, sometimes it was going grocery shopping, you know, it was, you know, with, with the little newborn strapped to her chest. Exactly. You know? um, so having an 11 month old and a three year old, you just got to make it work. But um, so, you know, in a professional sense, I've been busier. Um, you know, the little ones are home more. We're all together as a family more. So it's yeah. actually been um, all things considered. Right. Um, of how serious, you know, certain situations concerning where you could be, um, you know, we're doing pretty well. Yeah. 
No, I think we are too. I mean, other than my husband losing his job, we're enjoying just being a family, having that slower start in the morning. It used to be we were waking up super early. It was go, 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 go. And it was probably 9 a.m. before I can exhale, like when all the kids were off to school. So I, I like I like this slower pace and everybody's home and we get to do Frisbee golf or make, make a puzzle or, you know, cook right. some fun. Like I, I like all those parts. It's, it's good. It's yeah. I, it's been amazing just to speak to that point that, um, you know, after the extension took place and one thing I would say for anybody out there is just protect your inputs. So I know I kind of went through like the four stages of grief with this thing <laughs> and I kind of got through them quickly because I was like, no, no, no. So if we have this opportunity, let's take advantage of it. And yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, the only true constant is the change that's coming. So like, let's take a step back. And I drove home like the first day that the changes had implemented and I pulled onto my street that like runs in between our neighborhoods. And I thought there was like a, a neighborhood like um, parade, um, a social distancing parade that was going on that I we didn't get the HOA memo about because it was literally like lines of people on the sidewalks, like a couple with a dog and then a small family and then an older couple and then somebody running. Right. right. I've never seen, where are the, where are all these people like normally? Yes, I'm, I'm laughing that you said that because like you, I work from the front of my house. So right. I have a view to our street and I told I told out my whole family, like the best thing is watching the parade of, of neighbors I didn't even know I had. Walk, you know, riding the bike, skateboarding. I mean, they're doing all kinds of things. They're doing chalk, elaborate sidewalk chalk, whatever it is, people are outside. And yeah. I, I, I don't know, I love it. I think that's great. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, it's definitely a change of pace and, you know, even before the iPhone in 2006, I believe is when it came out. Like, I just remember, you know, even meeting college, like we were always outside, yeah. you know, at, at the commons area, like playing Frisbee and doing like we were never, it's just, it's cool to see that, um, you know, hopefully some of these habits that are forced upon us will be, you know, taken, taken with us as we kind of move through the, uh, you know, the aftermath and as we come out of this thing together. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I agree. All right. Well, we brought you on for a reason. Um, <laughs> here's the reason we're okay, dying. Cool. We're dying to hear about your fasting journey. Like, tell us how you got started and how that came about. Cool. Um, I love telling this story, and it keeps changing. So, at any point in time, please feel free to to bonk me over the head and be like, "Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, stop!" Like, okay, that was that was either good or what did you mean by that? Because I just I I get fired up about this stuff. Um, so fasting for me was something I had dabbled in. Uh, and I know you and I spoke about the intermittent fasting that you do. Yeah. And I had done that with the keto diet. I have done that with low carb and I got some really good results short term, but I could never get it to stick. Right? right. So fasting for me now kind of resides in a place where it is something. And this is why we named the, our company the fasting for life like yeah not because it <laughs> yeah it, it because we got a question on the q a the other day like what are you you know how long are you going to fast for and i'm like what happens when you get to your ideal body weight or body composition right which is really the weight is just the metric we want the health that comes along with it right um and that was the missing piece for me throughout my life and yeah. you know so fasting for me is forever going to be a part of it um and i got started because i had tried everything else <laughs> with lots of frustration and the, the the next level of frustration for me was I was running these wellness nutrition workshops and doing metabolic testing, DNA testing, um, functional medicine, all of this stuff of all of my patients and I would see them get better and their metrics would improve and then through seven years of being in full-time private practice, my numbers were getting worse. Most rides were in the 900s. My midsection was getting bigger and I literally was turning into my dad in, you know, in terms of my health profile. And my dad and I have a great relationship. I'm working right. with him now to right. reverse his diabetes and metabolic syndrome and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was just like this, this I'm out of options. And right. I've done the calorie counting and the calories in, calories out and the macros and working out at 5 a.m. And I rode 30 half marathons in 45 days on the, on the rower. I, I remember when you were doing that. Oh my gosh, I remember yeah. that. And six months later, my health metrics were worse and I wasn't sleeping and my mood was all over the place. And then we had a, a kid and then my wife, <laughs> um, which completely changed my perspective. And then she had her business 
and it changed me for the better. And um, it was just like, I couldn't get a handle on, you know, feeling the way I should feel and my numbers being where they should be. But I knew all the science and I was teaching it. Yeah. So like, what was I missing? So the key for me was fasting. And so it was really like a, you know what, I tried everything else. So why not try this? Right. And um, my good friend and colleague, Tommy, who we started this endeavor with, he had found um, a resource called Dr. Jason Fung in his book called The Obesity Code. Yeah. And he read The Obesity Code and he started putting it in. And over like the six months of our friendship developing, um, I started noticing like he was changing. His mood was changed. He looked leaner. He was thinner. He, he felt better. And I was, so we just started having conversations. Um, and it, this was, happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a God thing. I'm like, uh, okay. Like who is this dude? Right. He has a business and a family very similar in terms of, uh, you know, seasons of life. They have two little ones as well. Um, we're just around the exact same age, a girl and a boy. And, um, so we've become really good friends and, I'm on father. I'm at Father's Day, getting off the phone with my dad earlier that morning, seeing him without his shirt on, opening up the above ground pool up in New England, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm like wait a minute." So I'm sitting in the in the kitchen with Tommy. And I'm like, "Tommy, what are you doing? Like, if you were me, what would you do?" Yeah. Because he's a sciencey guy, logical. I didn't know he had a master's in physiology at this point. So I'm standing <laughs> in his kitchen, and he literally tells me, "Stop eating." You're like, wait. What? This this <laughs> was it. Yeah. <laughs> he jokes about it. He's like, it was like I almost punched you in the stomach. Like, yeah. and I'm like, well, what do you mean? Because I was looking at everything from a tracking and a calorie in, calorie out perspective. But when you insert undiagnosed or unrealized insulin resistance, mm -hmm. which is the true cause of weight gain and fat storage and how your body metabolizes those two things, um, all my numbers in terms of those tests were normal, but I have it and I had it. And it was what was causing me to continually creep up in the weight category and creep down in the body composition category, even though I worked out so much, okay. you know, year mm -hmm. after year after year. Can I pause you for one second? Cause there's going to be people watching. They're going to be like, well, what's insulin resistance? Like what is he talking about? Yeah. So here's, so insulin resistance simply, so if we think of our body, right, so we have all of these complex communications that take place, 70 plus trillion cells. We have a nervous system and an immune system, which are our two main systems. And those pretty much run and govern like all function. Like your heart can't beat without those two things working. Right. right? Specifically the nervous system first. Right. So, you know, the brain communicates and send those signals for the body to function and then all the protein and DNA and all that stuff does its thing. So our body, everything in our body is controlled by hormones, right? So hormones control all of our processes, our growth, our digestion, all of it, right? So why would fat storage and fat burning or energy utilization in the body be governed by something other than a hormone? That wouldn't make any sense, right? Right, right. So in the typical weight loss model, it's, it's um, decrease your input, your calories, right? right. Right. If you want to, you know, burn fat and lean out, right. Or, uh, you know, lose weight or improve health, right? However you want to, to to mention it, and then increase your movement. So consume less and burn more. Exactly. Every long term study that I've ever seen um, has failed in that model long term. Wow. Short term, it operates because okay. you are restricting, so your body starts to burn its fuel, its reserve fuel sources, right? Right. Right. So what insulin does is insulin controls that switch that turns your body on to burn those fat stores rather than using carbohydrates, which is the short term energy source okay. that's floating around in your bloodstream. So when right. you eat, your insulin goes up and then your blood sugar follows suit. Right. Because you have this excess amount of energy put in your system. Right. So the insulin is what actually regulates what your body does with that. So okay. if you have too much of it or you eat too frequently, or you have, um, you know, uh, genetic predisposition or the timing of your meals, or even things like steroids and prednisones and those types of things can cause um, you know, the, the liver to store that sugar source, that glycogen. And then what happens is when that gets backed up, then it starts to store around your midsection. And then from your midsection, it goes to your visceral fat, which is right. in between the organs, which is the stuff that 
increases your chance of, you know, uh, comorbidities and heart disease and all that stuff. So I was doing everything right on the outside, but on the inside, my body right. was going, what the heck? So insulin yeah. is that controlling, that control panel, that master control system that says burn or store. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's now, gonna yeah. In, in most cases, we don't test insulin right. unless you've already been, you know, diagnosed pre-diabetic or diabetic, right. we test fasting blood sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And we look at, um, you know, we don't look at the actual cause of the problem. We're looking at the effect, which is the blood sugar number. Right. So um, unless you specifically look at insulin and track it over a period of time, you're not going to have an idea of whether or not um, this is, you know, this is really the root of the problem. And for me, all of those things added up where it was like all my functional metabolic tests, my adrenal tests, all the stuff I had done, my gut test came back clear and it was only pointing to blood sugar, but I tested my blood sugar and it was normal. But then I dove into phase two liver processes and that's where your liver stores glycogen gotcha. and boom, it was like, oh, yeah. insulin resistance is the cause of the weight gain, even though I'm doing everything right. Wow, dude. Okay. So I'm uh, sorry to derail you. I know you were telling us that Tommy says to you, totally right. stop eating. <laughs> You can put yeah. That in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just stop eating. So I looked at him. I was like, well, what in the heck does that mean? Right. I'm wow. like, he's like, well, let me tell you what I do. So I actually pulled this out last night because we recorded a podcast episode last night of how I lost 50 pounds in 50 days because we've gotten some questions from our listeners that were like, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. Like, how? Like, did you exactly. just not eat for, exactly. for 50 days? For 50 days. <laughs> right. So I actually just went back last night and pulled this out of my journal. And all I did was stay consistent. So much like, you know, uh, rehabbing an injury or, or, or building muscle or improving your health by eating better, the consistency was the key. So I went back and I was just doing um, 24 hour fast. So I was eating one meal a day. Okay. And then I did some 48 hour fast mixed in with a couple 36s. Yeah. And then I did a 72 hour, which I hated. I'll never do again. And then I did a bunch more 24, 48s, 24, 48s, a couple days off in between 24, 48s, 24, 48s. And then I was down like 30 pounds. And I was like, you know what? Let me see how fast I can get. Let, let me give myself 60 days and just get aggressive with this thing. Wow. So then I did a seven day fast. And then I lost like seven 40, days 40, fast. Oh my God. seven days. Yeah. Uh -uh. It's it's my favorite. That is my ideal fast. I, I love it. Scott. Yeah, I love it. So mm -hmm. it's <laughs> um, and then I oh, went back to 20, 24s and 48s and 24s and 48s. And then I did a final five day fast to get down to 48 and a half pounds in 50 days. Oh. Um, and there was about a 40 percent regain. So I put about five. And I've been I've been staying in that 40 to 42 to 43 pounds lost for eight months now. So Tommy was the one who said, okay, Here's the resource I use, and I just digested that. I read that book in two days, and then I was like reading the. He has 45 pages of endnotes and research articles, and I started pulling up the research articles. And um, oh, good. I have it. And I just fire hosed it. I was just like, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yep. Um. So yeah, Tommy was my guide. You know, he he was the one who gave me the hey, it's okay to do this, even though it goes against everything you've been doing and everything in your brain, you know, to be true because it's been taught to you over the years. Um, he's like, you got to forget all that and just trust that this is going to work. And I mean, the results just spoke within the first week. I was like, yep, this is it. That's amazing. That is so, that is, I mean, I just can't even imagine your journey. You're, you go from, okay, I'm going to do every, a marathon on the rower every day. <laughs> To I'm gonna do seven days of fasting. I mean, you're okay. you've got some willpower, my friend. This is no different than anyone that runs a marathon or starts a new workout program, yeah. or you know, it's no different. It's just that decision making process yeah. where you decide in the moment to say, "I'm gonna do this." Mm -hmm. And it, what's the worst thing that happens? Mm -hmm. I, I, everything else I had done up until that point wasn't working. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like. Okay, well, why not? And then, yeah, yeah, and then the science made sense, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So, it was and really cool. Becky from our uh, is in the comments, and she is asking us, how do you test your own insulin? Okay, so you don't yet. Um, 
there are ways to do it. And I, this is something that's been on, on our to-do list for quite some time. So I, I'm not going to pretend that I have the answer now, but there are ways to tell how your body is responding by using um, ketone and blood sugar monitors. Yeah. There's, an equ- and there's an equation you can use called the GKI equation. GKI. And that gives you an idea where you are. Yeah, GKI. Okay. Um, okay. And that's the monitor that I use is called Keto Mojo. Yes, I have that. Yes, that's the one yeah. I use. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're probably not going to see the the lower or the higher numbers, depending on which scale we're referencing, you know, right. in, a, in an 18 hour window. Right. Um, but the best way to monitor what the insulin is doing is what your blood sugar is doing and how the, how your body and your energy and your focus and your and how the scale is. The scale will tell you a lot. It's kind of like the guide, the ruler throughout the journey. Right. Um, but going back to the, the thought I had is I have some research papers on how to measure heart rate uh, insulin and the effect of insulin on your body through measuring heart rate variability, HRV, oh. Oh, yeah. which is a yeah. lot of like the whoops and the, the yeah. Apple, Apple yeah. watches and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, other than ordering the test um, and getting the blood work done, which you can do, um, you know, like any labs now in Katy. Okay. Um, you can, you can call in and, you know, get the blood work done. You have to have somebody process it. So we're in the process of putting together the, um, clinical metabolic program to go along with the fasting. Awesome. It's just, that's for quarter two and now yeah. we're in quarter two. So we're just yeah. starting that process. Starting pro- oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Melissa in our comments is like 72 hours. Like <laughs> she's, she's in disbelief now. During that like period, do you not exercise because that would make you like more hungry or what was your game plan during that time period? Or did you just do everything as normal? Everything is normal. Wow. So there are a lot of myths out there when it comes to the physiological effects of exercise and eating and, you know, uh, uh, having to eat to exercise and Three important meals is three meals a day is you know a staple and breakfast is the most important meal and always have a snacks with you and yes, you gotta speed yes, up your metabolism and yes. there's a lot of myths out there when you really look at yeah. the science behind it. So sure. now if you are a performance athlete and you are doing CrossFit and you are working out five to seven days a week, there right. is a transition period. Oh yeah, I'm sure that takes place when your body becomes what we call fat adapted. Yeah. And that means You've cleared out the short-term glycogen in your liver, and your body can easily flip from sugar burner to fat burner, sugar burner to fat burner, sugar burner to fat burner, right? Right. That takes a little time. That's about two weeks. And we're putting together a a fasting for um, performance and a fasting for uh, high-level performance program. That's on the list for the future also. Yeah. But just – Those those two weeks where you're in that fasting, I mean – yeah, I felt it's like they, they call it the keto flu, you know, just where you feel like blah. It does take a transition period for sure. But you, but what was the what was the outcome on the other side? It was good on the other side, but it was getting through those two weeks. <laughs> that was the difference. So, yeah, so there's a couple of tricks here. So okay. one thing is you got to stay super hydrated and you got to do electrolytes. So and not the chemical electrolytes, but literally just like a trace mineral. Right. Or a sea salt or a Himalayan salt. That yeah. will help. Yes. And then if you're doing an eating window where you're doing like a one meal a day, um, mm-hmm. here's the thought. So most people work out early in the morning, right? Or a lot of people do. Right. Um, do those people get up and eat breakfast before they work out? Yeah, no, not usually. So you're, you're already fasted. So what's right. just another 48 hours? You're still right. in a fasted state, but now your body's actually um, better adapted to burn the fat stores rather than, you know, the, the blood sugar. Because when you wake up in the morning, you are at your lowest point. In, in blood sugar, right? right? So that's why bodybuilders and whatnot, it's always do the cardio early in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. And then go do the muscle building in the afternoon. So another right. trick is other than staying hydrated and use trace minerals is um, to help with the keto flu. Yeah. Is um, you can always do a pickle spear too, mm-hmm. which always works. I was drinking the pickle um, spear at one time. That, that helps a lot. There you go. <laughs> but here is a point where if you get your fasting zealots or your keto zealots or your keto like warriors or your fasting warriors or low carb warriors, whatever it is, we don't really sit in one camp or the other. It's about fitting it into what works for you. Right. And um, you could do 
um, like a simple, simple, like nothing else in it, branch chain amino acid. Yes. And that would, that would just, that would level the playing field, help your body get through it a little bit more. You wouldn't have to worry about the, I'm going to lose muscle concern right. that's out there, which is also potentially a myth if you look at the research. Right. Um, so it's like, you just got to figure out what works for your body. So if you're going to do a 72 hour, I do everything as normal. I don't change my routine. Okay. Um, and then those are the things that I know people have done or that we've looked into or made recommendations for people and they've worked well. Okay. And then Melissa from, um, in the comments, she's asking, she says, how do you remain productive during an extended fast? She says she gets really jittery during fast. So she wanted to know if you have any advice for that. Yeah, so we, oh my gosh, this is amazing. The timing on this couldn't be any better. We just talked about this last night. So oh, good, good. yeah, there's an episode coming out about it. So what people, a lot of the, the, the concept of the fear of doing it is all of these things that we think, right? Mm -hmm. Is, well, um, most people think, well, I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be fatigued. I need to eat. I get headaches. I get jittery. I get, so I get, all of these things, you're going to be able to feel more as your body kind of to regulates, and Tommy explains this a lot better than I do, but you're gonna feel those slight fluctuations in blood volume more. And it could just be the effects of lower insulin, which then brings down the hormone that acts on your kidneys to excrete water. So you could just be feeling that slight shift in blood volume that can kind of give okay. you that jittery, lightheaded feeling. Okay. And Typically, the trace minerals, the water, and the hydration will help. Now, specifically talking about productivity, people will think that they'll, and I'm not saying, I think it was Melissa asked this question that she was like, well, I'm worried about being tired. No, you actually have a 15% increase in your metabolism after you hit that 24 hour mark, that 24 to 36 hour mark. Okay. And you're going to have to schedule projects. You're going to have to, like, <laughs> When I started doing this, I was like painting, um, painting yeah. stuff. I was, I redid our entertainment center. Yeah. I, I was knocking out projects that have been on my list forever. Like you literally need to schedule things to do the first time you do a 48 or a 72 hour fast because yeah. you are going to need to keep busy, right? Yeah. Family's making food, dinner's being made, go for a walk. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, no, I have a client that was doing that and he was reporting the same thing to me. He was like, I I didn't know what to do with myself. I had all this energy and I didn't know where to put it, you know? So And you and, have more time because yeah. you're not cooking, you're, you're not eating, you're right. not shopping, you're not in the bathroom. Yes. Like you're just yes. you're like, okay, you're well now what? and cleaning the kitchen. Yes. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, thing, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Julie. One thing I want to add to that is if, yeah. if this is a rule that we have. The jittery, the lightheadedness, the the, the kind of drop in like short bouts of this uh, type feeling, hydrate, electrolytes, give it 15 minutes. Typically it resolves. If you okay. ever feel like ill, like you just don't feel good. Right. Eat. Okay. And then you can just start right over it. That's the wonderful thing about fasting is it's not right. like, Oh, I fell, I fell off the wagon on my diet. Now right. I need to get back on and undo those 3,500 calories I just put on because the scale <laughs> went up a pound. Right. 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 Well, well, no, it's just you either do it or you don't. Like, oh, I yeah. fell off. I had to. I wasn't feeling. I was. Eh, I decided to eat. Most times you can push through, but if you ever feel Ill, Ill, just eat, and then you can just start over again. Okay, perfect. All right. So, what about tips for people that want to get started? Like, I know that you jumped right into fasting, like extended mm -hmm. fasting. Do you recommend people do that, or do you re recommend that they start with intermittent fasting and build up, like start at sixteen hours, then seventeen, and then keep trying to build? Like, what is your thought? Yeah, so we we talk. <laughs> I talk about fasting all the time. Um, <laughs> we, I just had this realization last night. Like most of my conversations, you know, throughout fasting. the day are about fasting. I'm like, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Um, so to answer that question, um, I believe that the 186. So the true, if you just Google fasting, you're going to see intermittent 186 pop up. Right. Okay. That window is kind of like the new you know, acai back in the day, the new right. coconut oil, the new, like yeah. the new terminology, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's great because it's getting exposure mm -hmm. um, for this tried and true principle that has been a part of our lives for hundreds of years. Yeah. Fasting yeah. has been proven. It works. It's safe. It's effective. The longest fast ever recorded was 382 days. Um, 
just unbelievable. So this has been around, right? But we're in we're in the the world of consumption and and you know marketing and snacks and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. going back to how to get started, I believe that that twenty four hour mark is where the magic happens. Okay. Um, and that's just with looking at the depletion of glycogen in the liver, um, and then looking at the ability to simplify and remove temptation from the equation. So for me, the 24 hour mark, I feel the best at 18.6 will work for most people that don't have a history of yo-yo weight through dieting or um, potential insulin resistance or um, biometric uh, biomarkers in the blood that are like not out of range, but slightly off. So if, if you don't have a diagnosed insulin resistance issue or prediabetes or diabetes, you may be thinking you're okay, but your body's trying to tell you based on these up and down results that, you know, it's not working. So the 18.6 will work like for my wife, she'd kill 18.6. Like she'd be great on it. Right. Cause right. Yeah, she would crush it. She leans out really well on RP strength templates and she loves to measure and weigh every little thing. For me, it's like I need to simplify. So 24 hours a day makes it super simple because you just pick your meal, right? So whatever you prefer to eat, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you eat that meal and then you don't eat again until the following day at the same time. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what we recommend at the Fasting for Life. We came up with the Fast Start Guide and that's where we start. Everybody should start with the 24 hour mark because if you go to bed, you eat dinner at six, right? And you go to bed and by tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., you've already got 12 hours in. Yes. So you really just need to make it till 6 p.m. and you're out of day. That's right. Exactly. So it may sound crazy. Yes, I get it. Yeah. Um, it's new. But, it's a new thing to some people. Yeah. 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 And we, I mean, we have so many conversations about it. We hear that a lot. So the best thing I can recommend is if you're weary and we're coming up with a, an, an algorithm to kind of put people into almost like a fasting type based on their personalities mm -hmm. um, where I'm more of the, okay, I'm just going to go crush this because I'm, I'm annoyed and I turn that into action. And then I'm like, okay, let's just go do this. Exactly. But some people want to dip their toes. So if you've never fasted, right. Mm -hmm. And you don't think you can do a 24 hour, which I believe everybody can mm -hmm. set your window. So eat between 12 and eight, right. Eat two small, small meals. That's your eight hour, um, six, I would say 18, six, I meant 16, eight. Sorry. I always do that. Your 16, know, eight window. Yeah. 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 So pick your meals, start with that. And then the next day, shorten your window by two hours. So if you eat lunch at 12, now I'm not saying do it for a week, the next day go to, uh, 1 PM or 2 PM. And then the next day start eating at two or three, three or four, four or five, five or six. And within a week you're at one meal a day. Okay. Gotcha. And that's where, the, that's where the magic happens in Thank terms you. of the people that we've been helping. Yeah, don't you think like really the barrier to entry here is just our um, habits? Like, you know, so many of us mindlessly eat all day. You know, we're just grazing here and picking up a snack here. We're making the peanut butter and jelly for the kids and we're having a bite and we're licking the spoon and then they, there's their goldfish, we're having one or whatever it is. So I, I feel like it's getting over that preconceived idea like, oh my gosh, like I think so many of us are using food to cope. Like it's how we're managing our stress, especially right now. So we're turning to food as the comfort. So the idea that you're going to remove our comfort, I think is what sends people into fear of even trying this. Now in, in, to speak to that, yeah. um, right now it's an interesting time. And I laughed because I just pictured this meme that I saw in my head um, so you, you may have seen this, you live in this world too. So you yeah. probably have, but it's the one, all right, day one of, of, uh, you know, shelter and home. Yes. Um, I'm going to start a new, um, you know, meditation program. I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to eat well for the next 30 days. And then day four, I literally poured the ice cream on the bowl of pasta. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. The wheels just fell off. So right. in speaking to the habit, um, this is where the, our first thing that we talk about always is your mindset. So, yes. and I'm sure you do too with, with, with yes. your coaching, right. your mindset, but also not just your mindset, but your motivation. So if you're doing this to just lose weight, right, you're going to just continually take the bites of peanut butter and jelly and you're going to snack and you're going to just use that comfort. Right. So 
if you, so that's the mindset is being open to change, being open to trying it, being open to saying, okay, this could work. What's the worst thing that could happen, right? Yeah. But then the motivation piece is really where the rubber meets the road and speaks to the habits. If you have an anchor point or a why that is greater than, oh, I want to lose weight. Because if everybody says that, right? But we live in Texas. We're one of the biggest states in size and waistlines in the country, right? Yeah. So if everybody, oh, I want to be healthy. Okay, well, okay, great. That sounds great, but your actions don't match your words. So okay. if everybody just anchored and said, oh, I want to lose weight, everybody would be you know, slim and healthy and we wouldn't have the heart disease and all that stuff. Right. So that doesn't matter. It's, it's the anchoring of, to the why you're doing it. So is it so you can, you know, for me personally, it's changing the generational curse that, that we have been put in by my family's health, right. and what we were doing growing up and to no one's fault of the, no, no one's fault are, individually. But they can, it's just, yeah. Yeah, but I want to change that general generational path when it comes to health. So yeah. um, I grew up sick and suffering and miserable throughout my teenage years with asthma and issues and health issues. And, um, you know, we, we don't want that. We want to start the new generation with a better opportunity. So the motivation really um, needs to be anchored to a why greater than I want to lose weight or greater than a selfish reason. It needs to be for someone or something else. So for me, it's my kids, it's my family. Mm -hmm. um, for some, for grand, for older grandparents, it might be, I want to be able to be there for my grandkids. For parents, it might be, I want more energy to play with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I want to be able to, you know, go to all their games and not feel like I need to go take a nap in the car in between right. the soccer games on Saturdays. Right. Um, I, I want to be a better parent. Like whatever right. that is, you need to do some self-introspection yeah. of, of why you're doing it. And then the habit side of it, um, and this is where Tommy's perspective is so great with his with when he looks at things from the psychology standpoint. Um, our habits are typically, especially when it comes to food, are not hunger. It's the psychological cues. It's yeah, it's the routine. Right. Yeah. So so here's my thing. I, sorry, I'm getting a little fired up. Break the routine. Like just break it. Break the routine somehow. Like you, we've all seen like the, the, at some point, like the rubber bands, when you, your negative right. thoughts smack the rubber band, yeah. do something that, okay, if you break it, drop and give 10 push up. It's like, exactly. um, call, call, call your wife or husband and apologize for something that you don't think you were wrong for. Like exactly. do something yeah. that breaks that, that, that like yeah. cue that says, oh, okay, I need to go do this. Yeah. I think for me during COVID-19, the afternoons are challenging. And so a lot of times I'll just like, I'm going to go for a walk and I'll put in, I like to listen to your podcast and just put in Thank something you. good, you know, that's going to inspire me on to my goal and get me out of my house where I am tempted. And because I'm not hungry, you know, it's just, right. it's the stress, it's the anxiety and yeah, find some, find a way to, like you said, break the routine. Yeah. And it's, it's the acknowledgement that it's going to happen. Right. But you have the ability to just say, okay, we were talking about this last night in one of our episodes and it was like, so if you're doing one meal a day and people are having trouble with making good food choices for that meal, like they're falling off and they're getting the pizza and the, the fast food or the, you know, they're carb loading when they just undid all the hard work they just put right. in for that previous day. It's you look at it from a health. We all know that the donut versus the apple, the apple's better for you in terms of health. Right. Um, but we all choose the donut from time to time because we talk ourselves into the fact that we, you know, kind of deserve it. We've worked right. hard. This is, mm -hmm. oh, it's just one, so that, that sort of thing. But if you have one opportunity a day or two opportunities, if you're doing intermittent fasting, where you're going to do two small meals in that, you know, six or eight hour window, if you choose to ruin one of those meals with a bad decision, then you've just decreased your body's nutrition by 50%. That's right. Yeah. You're like, okay, well now I'm operating at 50%. So did that get me closer to my goal? Right. Well, no. And I'm, if you're doing one meal a day and you choose to, you know, decide to go down the path of least resistance and indulge, mm -hmm. um, now you've just undermined your health on that day 100% because right. you had one shot and you chose right. the bad thing. So just right. changing that little, just take a second and think, because I've actually caught myself making food for the family and like I'm about to like put the, and I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I just, <laughs> and then I drop it on the floor for the dogs. And my wife That's just looks real, at me. Right? Like, yeah. the, the struggle is real. 
Yeah, well, that actually that actually leads me to our next question. Becky was saying that, look, she just wants to be able to go hiking. Like when you said attach it to her why that's greater than the weight loss, her goal is like go hiking, be able to hike. But she's asking you what kind of meals do you suggest? And I know you were just kind of alluding to that. But, you know, maybe what specifically do you like to eat on your one meal a day or when you do eat? Amazing question. We get it all the time. And yeah. I am like the anti meal plan recipe guy. Like I don't want to create a, a, you know, a fasting for life recipe book that will never be, I don't like the word never, but not for me. Right. right. So I want simplicity and I want control. And that's what fasting has given me back into my life. Um, so the way we frame it and the way we think about it is balance. So um, I know for me, my body likes a little bit more fat and less carbs because right. of my insulin resistance. Right. My wife actually operates um, yeah. less fat. Yeah, yeah. Less fat, more carb and moderate protein. Right. right? So there, there are, you know, we, she's done some testing I've done to, to indicate that, but really you can just do it based on how you feel and what the scale does on a day to day basis. Right. So the meals simply you want to um, decrease your refined processed carbs because exactly. those are the ones that cause the spike the most. Um, so you want to lean towards more slow acting carbs. You know, you can do a sweet potato, you can do brown jasmine rice, you can do even white potato. Like it's okay as long as it's a smaller portion, right? So what we tend to say is when you're breaking your fast, um, give yourself a window. If you're doing the longer fast, like 24 hours, 36, 48, 72, um, give yourself an eating window. So give yourself a two hour window where you start with maybe like a handful of cashews and then you go into you know, a couple siete chips with guacamole, and then you have your small meal and on the plate, less carbs, um, um, more lean protein and fat, just depending on kind of how you feel with the fat and the protein amounts. Right. So keep it super simple. You don't have to worry about weighing it. If you, I mean, if you're high performance and you track your macros and you have a, a health coach that wants you to do that, yeah, it's it's more data, the better, because you, you, you track what you value. Right. So, um, but yeah, for meal plans, just keep it really simple. So more cruciferous ve veggies, less on the, ref especially the refined processed carbohydrates. Uh, and then, um, yeah, just uh, look at the lean protein and fats, depending on what you feel better with. Yeah, I tell my clients that we're, you know, our goal here is high energy foods. And for everybody, like you said, that's different. For your mm -hmm. wife, it's one way for you, it's another way. And it's about experimenting, you know, to find out where your sweet spot is. How and to that, that yeah, and that's perfect. So that's why there's there's a there's a mastery part of this too, where it's trial and error. Yes, you know. So what does maintenance look for somebody with fasting compared to when somebody gets their ideal weight compared to you know person A versus person B? It's different. Right. So for me right now, maintenance is one meal a day, but in the future it might actually be one meal every you know one meal a day twice a week, and then you know intermittent the 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 um, 18, uh, 16, eight window, the rest of the days. I don't know yet because I'm not there. Right. But to that point, you know, the whatever feels better for you, whatever you feel better with. And then the fat, the fatter foods, the richer foods actually have more satiation associated yeah. with them. Okay. So that's why I always like to start with like a handful of cashews before I have dinner if I'm coming off a long fast, because like that'll fill you up. Sure will. Yep. And it, sure and it shuts that's down those that. hormones. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. You. yeah. Yeah. That takes that edge off right away. Right. Yeah. No, I like that. So, guys, you'll have to tell me, people that are listening, have we answered questions enough for you about like tips on getting started? And if not, go ahead and type in the comments whatever question that you have about tips about getting started. And Erin, I think we answered your question. Um, you were saying, you know, what do you recommend trying to remain committed to a fasting program? And I think Scott had addressed it by just saying, you know, attach a wide to it that's greater than just weight loss. You know, have have that goal um, that you feel strongly about. But again, if you need more information, Erin, let us know in the comments. Um, Scott, I wanted to ask you, like, where do you think people struggle the most when they're getting started? Yeah, it's having a plan and having having the accountability, the 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 accountability to, to go with it. Right. Um, it's like, well, I think I'm going to do this for a couple of days. Well, OK, that's great. But if you need to give it some time, mm -hmm. um, it's no different than any other program you've ever started or job right. you've begun right. or, you know, having a new yeah. child and completely flips your life upside down. You're like, OK, now I'm learning on the job. Right. Like right. so it's the same thing with fasting. It's if you start and you have a plan, right. 
Right. Like, so it's really sitting down, finding, setting a goal, right? Okay. I want to lose 20 pounds in 30 days. This is the reason I want to do it. Yep. And then, okay, here's my first week. I'm going to eat lunch on Monday because I have a business meeting. I'm going to eat dinner with the family on Tuesday. I'm going to have breakfast on Wednesday because that's a shorter window. I'm going to have breakfast on Wednesday yeah. because um, I have a big workout. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm not going to eat dinner or lunch until the following Thursday. And mm -hmm. then I'm not going to eat dinner until Friday. And right. then Saturday, I'll have just a normal day. And then Sunday, I'll just eat dinner. So it's right. it's literally having that plan. So you have to take the decision making and the thinking yep. out of it. Yeah. And I'd like to add something to that. I think it's, it, I think you're spot on what you said, but I think to add on it is like to have a plan in place for when you are hungry. Right. So, you know, or when you're being tempted, you're not hungry, but you're being tempted or you're feeling that urge to emotionally eat or whatever is going on subconsciously. But I think like um, for me, when I feel like I have an urge to maybe emotional eat. I'll say, okay, I'm going to take a cup of decaf hot tea and I'm going to go sit on the back patio and read a chapter in my book, you know, or I'm going to go to that walk and listen to the podcast um, at night just to like curb any munchies. Cause I tend to do a lot of my fasting in the evening. I always go to my room. Like when it's about when I'm going to go lay down for a little bit and just about to go to sleep, I'll take again, a cup of hot decaf tea. It warms my belly, takes mm -hmm. away any hunger pains. And then I'm going to bed not in a hunger place, you know? Right. So, and that, that's key too. And you got to figure out what works for you. So right. for me during the day, it's tons of water. If I get 60 right. or 90 ounces of water in before 10 AM, I'm good. Wow. So I can't, so I do like, this is just my liter bottle. That's awesome. So if I get that in, I'm good for the rest of the day. But if you I don't. In your water, like, do you put like the um, trace minerals or anything? Oh, if I, not now, but in the beginning, I did a lot more of that. Um, okay. But I only did the trace minerals as needed um, because your body has everything it needs right. to balance your minerals um, unless there's some type of underlying problem. And if there was, you would already know about it before you started fasting. So um, back to your point, though, which was hugely impactful, um, is having a plan for when you know you're going to potentially be derailed. Um, probably is like the, I, out of everything we've talked about, like write that down <laughs> because yeah. yeah, have a project, have a plan, have a place you can go. Yeah. Um, I do mine's mine's black coffee. If I'm mm -hmm. feeling, I'm like, Nope, I'm going to, you know, thankfully I didn't have an adrenal problem. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, my energy was related to insulin, not my adrenal. Right. So I, I can drink black coffee at 5 PM and go to bed at eight. So yeah. Yeah, I don't, I've never had that coffee effect, but it gives me something to like attach to where I'm like, okay, I'm good. Me too. That's the same thing. It's like, it's like my, okay, here's her. Yeah. And Steve is saying, he's telling us he's always struggling to start. He always has a reason why not. <laughs> and he says he's going to have to start to write down a plan. Like you were saying, um, he said he's also struggles at bedtime being hungry. So I think this has been really good information and cool. I won't keep you much longer, but Scott, I was, I was just curious, like, how do you and Tommy decide on what topics you're going to discuss on the podcast? Like, how does that come to come to be? Um, so to, to just completely be transparent, um, wow. we are, we are, we're on the fly. So yeah, okay. wow. I, yeah, we, awesome. we, we have a, we have a, we have an idea, right? We have, we have the brain. We have, we put a lot of time and effort and energy into building this thing. Um, and it's like, okay, well, what, first of all, we were just talking about our story. Like what, what did we do and how did fasting impact our lives? And from that, I think that relational component, which is lost in today's world yes. um, quite a bit, especially now it's very transactional. It's okay. very, you know, you go to the airport and you hand okay. the lady your bag and she checks it and throws it okay. on the conveyor belt. And okay. then she says, have a great flight. You say you too. And you're like, right. I do that. I literally do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to be in a relational trend, like in a uh, relationship with you. I want it yep. to be transactional. Like, okay, right. here's my stuff. Thank you for what you do. I'm gonna go over right. here now. Okay. So, um, you know, I really think you know our our relate our um, our relationship and our friendship has allowed us to, um, you know, just continually come up with things that we struggled with, pain points that we went through, but right. now. We just recorded three Q&A episodes last night because we've had so many of the same questions 
so then, really, yeah. how do we how do we decide? Well, we look at the principles, right? We look at what we did that worked. We look right. at why it worked, and then right. there are some weeks. Um, you know, I keep a I text myself um, messages throughout the week. Like if I see an article that interests me, or I see somebody talking about the calorie model. Or, so we always have this continual conversation about what we're hearing in terms of feedback. Um, and then we, we want to talk about that stuff because it doesn't matter what him and I care about. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's, right. it's like, what do you guys want? And, exactly. and honestly, all the questions that your, your people have been listening today, which I'm right. grateful for each and every one of them, yeah. um, you know, you guys are asking the same questions that we had. So we're like, wait a minute, there's something to this. Right. Right. No, there really is. There really is. All right. Um, Go ahead. Can I, can I, Stephen had said one thing, and I'm sorry to, to jump in there. I, I, no, I just no. it just popped back in my brain. Yes, go on. Um, about the why to not get started, right. and something that drives me nuts in doing thousands of consults while being in private practice. Right. When I was in private practice, was full time practice was <laughs> was oh it's the next birthday or it's the next holiday yes. or it's the so yes. listen listen I understand I we have two kids they're crazy right. I love them we have three right. dogs my wife has. We are busy. We're all over the map. Like some days I feel like we have no organization whatsoever, even though, you know, if we sit back and look like we're pretty lucky, we're pretty blessed. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're doing some fun stuff. Our days are great, but it's just all over the map some days. Right. So all of this stuff is happening. And the great thing about this is it's you start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. So if you have something that's keeping you from doing it, like a trip or a business meeting or a Zoom call, now would be a Zoom call, not a business meeting, right, exactly. um, you plan around it. So you eat and be social, and then you just stop until the next meal. So right. my encouragement to him is, um, you know, the pain, I always get this wrong, but the pain of staying the same yes. has to, yeah, yeah, you know where I'm going with this, right? Totally so the, it has to outweigh, which one is it? Mm -hmm. it has to outweigh the 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 pain of the pain of change has to be less than the pain of staying the same. So you you gotta get to that pain point. And for me, it was just like I'm fed up. I just did six months of perfect tracking and eating and working out, and the scale's starting to go back up. So at some point, you just get fed up. So I always like to turn that 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 uh, emotion into just taking some form of action. So Stephen, if it, if it was your question, just just start. Like that's I know this sounds so simple. It's just like, just start today. So it's 12.51. If you haven't eaten lunch, don't eat lunch. Eat dinner. <laughs> that easy. Yeah, that easy. Right? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know people are wanting to know, how do you personally handle, like, family dinners or special occasions? I plan. Huh? You plan. I plan, plan for them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you're so, going to be eating dinner with my wife for our anniversary. So that's my meal. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So Tommy does a date night every Wednesday. Um, with his wife and he will literally plan. So he's starting a seven day fast today after okay. date night. And okay. then he's going till next Wednesday on date night. Right. Because date night is like top tier for him and his wife. Wow. Right? So okay. I, on date night, I've done one date night where I didn't eat or indulge at all. Not a good idea, Scott. Yeah. Right? Don't do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So obviously if you're trying to hit a big goal, you're doing a 30 day fast, hopefully your significant other be like, okay, I understand. Um, right. This isn't a long time thing, but um, it's the special occasions. This model of using fasting allows you to get the control of being able to eat, enjoy yourself with zero guilt. Right. Zero. Because now you know, and I'm right. not saying go crazy, but you no. now you know that you'll hard. feel you'll feel terrible. The yeah. next day, you have the ability to just say, you know what? Oh wait, I don't have to eat. Like I can just skip the next couple of meals, and until you start feeling like that fog and that weight come off. Right. Like not, not on a scale, but just like that if feeling. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, okay, now I'm back. So it gives oh, you yeah. that control to right. be able to manage those. So if you've got a bunch, like around the holidays, I did a three-day fast going up into Thanksgiving. I did a two-day fast post-Thanksgiving. I did a three-day fast going up into Christmas Eve. So it gives you that ability to manage those and then come out on the other side, not being those six to eight pounds heavier that everybody else is after the holidays. Amen. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. So, and Becky's asking, and I know I know we're going to wrap up in a second, but Be yeah, Becky's sure. asking, um, what fluids do you consume? She says she likes to drink coffee as well. 
Yep. So um, the basic trifecta is what we recommend. So um, coffee, black coffee, tea, water. Now, some people will put a little bit of creamer in their coffee if that's like something that makes them happy. Right. Like it's okay. Stick with it. It's okay. Um, under 100 calories isn't going to really cause your insulin to spike anyway. Right. Um, in the beginning, eventually you'll probably go to black coffee anyway. Um, and then waters, sparkling water is huge for me. So okay. I, I do have, I, I didn't answer this earlier, but this bottle is a soda stream bottle. Ah. So I just do bubbly water. Um, and then um, in a pinch, if I'm on a long fast, I'll do a Zevia. Okay. Which has zero sugar, but does have stevia in it. And the research shows that pure liquid stevia actually doesn't spike your insulin, but stevia that's combined with like a maltodextrin or an official exactly. sweetener will. Right. So stay away from that stuff. So really for me, it's teas, coffees, um, and some form of water. If I'm sick of regular water, I'll, I'll, I'll make it fancy with some bubbles. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then last question, I know I keep saying, but one. No, it's, I'm and good. I'm good. It was one on my list. So I'm glad that she asked it. Melissa is asking, does she need to start taking a certain vitamin or minerals just to like make sure that everything's good before the fast? Unless you've been shown to be mineral deficient. No. Okay. Um, if you take a multivitamin, keep taking it. That guy who did the 382 day fast, right. um, his last name was Barbieri, I believe. I can never remember his name when I need it. Um, he, um, all he did was take a multivitamin. He was severely obese, diabetic, you know, all that kind of stuff. And all he did was take a multivitamin. Um, but if your body needs minerals, <clears throat> um, it has it in your bone. So it knows to turn that hormone on to go break down the bone. And then when the bone rebuilds, it actually creates the bone to be stronger, much like exercise it increases bone density. Your body has those mechanisms to be able to go and pull that stuff out if it truly needs it. But if you are been, if you've been diagnosed as deficient in an area, then yes. Um, and when it comes to supplements, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't have to make any changes with that um, because, you know, I don't eat fish, so I need to take my omega threes or else I'm not going to get them. Right. Okay. Very good. If I don't see anything else come in, we are going to thank you so, so much for giving us your time. I know everyone learned so much and, is inspired by your own journey and your own commitment to your health. Like, thank you for that. Thank you for the opportunity, Julie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm super excited for people to tune into your podcast. It's, it's the, the thing I like to do when I take a walk in the afternoon, everyone's saying thank you. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, again, I, I just, this is amazing. I could talk about this stuff all day. So if you want to keep going for the next hour, I'm good. Okay. I know we all have other stuff well, to do, but well, that, um, yeah. People are already telling me to have you back. So I guess Scott, <laughs> have you back. Yeah, they're, right. they're saying, you have him back. He's good. Cool. So, yeah. cool. Well, thank you yeah. so much again. Um, and I really, um, you know, we've kind of seemed to have merged our, um, our realities here with, you know, what you've started. Apparently we started around the same times with your coaching right. and your life coaching. And so however we can um, help more people and provide right. more value, I, right. I am I am game. So. Whatever we can do. And I'm just so appreciative of the opportunity. And I think it's actually fun that we're doing this now because, you know, this is something since we're all at home and we're kind of looking for like new projects, like this is something people could do. Like, hey, I'm going to do this this week, you know, and, and see where this goes. And or I'm going to try it for today. Like it's a great opportunity when things are a little slower paced. You know, you're not busy going places and having business meetings at different restaurants. It's a good opportunity to, to test this out. Yeah. And that's great. We, um, I know I've seen your exercise videos, which have been, I've been, yeah. you know, I've, I've sent the link you sent me on Facebook messenger to a couple people because um, people have asked, they're like, what do, where do I, I'm like, I'm not the exercise guy. Yeah. I, I do yeah. push ups and I get on the rowing machine and do some body weight stuff like that. I'm not that person. So, yeah. um, we do have a resource if people want it. It's a free resource. Okay. Um, it's called the fast start guide. Okay. Um, and there's actually a 20 minute video training that goes along with it. Wow. Okay. Um, and that's on our website. So if you just go to the website, thefastingforlife.com, it's totally free. If you've got some spare time, because it just popped in my head when you're like, yeah, we've got this more time. I'm like, oh yeah, well just go use the resource. So, okay. um, All right. Perfect. cool. Perfect. Yeah. Well, and, um, it's the fasting dot the fasting for yep. Yes. And that's the podcast as well. So it, it's fact, easy yeah. to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to have you back. I mean, cool. it's unanimous. Everybody is like, have him back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, Steve is asking, he missed the beginning. Can I replay? Yes. So as soon as I hit in broadcast, it's going to be there for you, Steve, and you can start from the beginning. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Thank you 
everyone for tuning in. It's so fun to see all your faces. We appreciate the support. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.